Good day, Matt and Will. Thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. For our audience, would you each please take a moment and uh, introduce yourselves and especially tell us a little bit about your background in L&D. Matt, would you go first? Sure, beauty before age, absolutely. So, uh, so I'm Matt Richter, I'm with the Tiagi Group. This is a very large company of two people. And uh, the two of us, I've been with Tiagi now for, we figured it out the other day, 25 years. And in that period of time, I have uh, been an instructional designer, facilitator, trainer, a game designer, a consultant and so forth. And now uh, as a part of the Tiagi group, one of my greatest pleasures is partnering with Will uh, as we co-organize the Learning Development Accelerator. Will, now for the older guy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, you know, your introduction just choked me up so much. I just spilled my coffee all over myself. <laughs> But you know, we want to be our authentic selves here, right, Guy? Yes. <laughs> so, um, Will Tallheimer, and I am a principal at Tier One Performance. Uh, many of you might have known me from my 22 years doing work learning research consulting. Um, I've been, I've done all kinds of jobs in the field: instructional design, uh, training, uh, simulation architect, project manager, etc. And um, I guess the way I like to be thought about is a guy who takes a look at the research, uh, synthesizes it, oh, I should not use big words like that, and then um, makes it available uh, in a practical way for the real people in the field. And uh, yeah, I am really delighted uh, to be working with Matt on LDA and uh, this thing, this whole thing got started with LDC, the you know, Learning and Development Conference last summer, and that was such a big success that we felt, well, actually people demanded that we continue it. Actually, technically, it got started with three forgettable nights uh, in Barcelona with our friend Julie Dirksen. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to that history in a moment. Thank you both for those introductions here, and, and now on to the main event, but, but first, for full disclosure purposes, I need to identify that, in fact, I'm on your executive advisory board for LDA. So wait, 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 wait. Matt, hey. is that true? Did you invite him? Is he really? I was told by several other people that if we didn't include Guy, they wouldn't join. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Guy. We are so happy to have you. I don't, how many people do I owe? Uh, 72. 72, okay. <laughs> anyway, all right, so on to the main event now. So we're here to talk about LDA. So uh, what the heck is LDA? You've already uh, preempted that question with uh, your, your preface, but uh, so what is LDA? What's that all about? And what was LDC? And, you know, and tell us more about this uh, start uh, with Julie. Matt. Okay, so this just threw away our entire planning because Will and I had figured out who was going to answer what question, and that one was supposed to go to Will. So I'm going to throw it totally off and I'll answer it. <laughs> but LDA is the Learning Development Accelerator, and it comes out of uh, the, the embers of the Learning Development Conference that Will and I organized with you being a part of that as well uh, last summer. And the, uh, one of the outputs of the conference was a group of about 300 people, many saying, what are we going to do next? And the fact that people kept saying, what are we going to do next? Uh, inspired us to uh, say, all right, well, what should we do next? And we decided that we wanted to create uh, a professional membership com community, not, not something that would be necessarily vendor generated or enable people to buy stuff but a community where professionals in the L&D could come together, learn from each other, learn from some of the best experts from around the world and have the opportunity to, to kind of guide the direction of the organization based on their needs, based on some of their wants and so forth. And so we've created a member driven community. Uh, we hope that we're increasing membership around the world. Right now we have members from six continents 
Uh, and we are looking to continue to expand that. Uh, we are offering workshops and in, in all different types of programming that we'll get into later, uh, as well as a series of resources like articles, videos, podcasts, and things like that, uh, that are available to members as well as non-members. Uh, so that's what we are. The Julie reference is uh, uh, where we all met. Well, Julie and Will knew each other for many years before that, but we met five years ago in Barcelona for the Gates Foundation, where we were all keynotes at the Teach to Reach conference that they run. And, uh, and we ended up spending three wonderful evenings hanging out every night in Barcelona, getting lost. And uh, so. Lost in great conversations too. Yes, that too. So Will, what would you add to what uh, Matt has shared? Well, uh, first of all, there's a lot of really great uh, L&D trade organizations throughout the world. And uh, what we saw, we thought, was uh, a niche that maybe wasn't served quite as well as it could have been. And that is, uh, and Matt may, may have a different perspective on this, but, but that niche is um, you know, bringing together uh, people who are doing work that is research aligned or research inspired or evidence informed or whatever words you wanna use. And uh, embracing everybody, of course, but you know, trying to make sure that we're not uh, exacerbating some of the mythologies, the learning myths that are out there, like learning styles. Um, but also just you know, getting people to embrace these things a little more and discuss them. Um, but also to be global and diverse. We, you know, a lot of organizations are regional or, you know, like North America based or whatever. And we really thought that the voices from across the world um, should be heard. And uh, I think those are sort of some of our major distinguishing uh, features. Anything else, Matt, that distinguishes? Well, and, it, and it's a work in progress, right? So right now we have a, a few people that are advising us from Australia, for example. Well, Australia is a pretty big place. Having only three people uh, helping to guide us uh, in how we can engage with Australia is, is sort of offensive. We need to have a lot more people uh, involved in Australia. We need to have a lot more people than we have in China. And so it's a work in progress, but it's, a, it's part of the vision of the organization that we're truly global, ultimately. And that uh, we're not, uh, we, it's not that we have only a few people representing different regions around the world. Um, so we're, we're starting to make inroads uh, throughout Africa. Uh, we're talking to people in South America and we're not there yet, but uh, we're hoping to uh, bring in L&D professionals from as many of the, the places in the world as, as want to be. And you know, one other uh, thing and, and Matt's emphasizing it is that is it's all about the people, mm -hmm. about the members, and yeah. uh, realizing that nobody knows everything, <laughs> and that you know one of the, one of the things that we'd like to do better, and, and we're not this is not going to be a, a thing about perfection, but you know a lot of organizations, trade organizations, they have sort of a broadcast model. Okay, come to us, we're gonna give you webinars, we're gonna give you conference sessions, we're gonna give you articles, uh, we're gonna sell you books. That's a broadcast, right? We want to, and, and this is gonna be difficult. And the reason people have not done it as well or as much as they could have is because it's not easy. But what we wanna do and what we wanna to try to do is to have more interactions. So if you come to one of our sessions, not every session, but for the most part, we're trying to get <clears throat> more um, engagement, more sharing, um, more ways that people can network from each other, learn from each other, um, and also to go beyond our meetings so that they get to know each other, they can share email addresses, they can talk to each other afterward. Um, so, so that's a real uh, point of emphasis for us. So uh, what, uh, in what ways can uh, a, a new member, if somebody was a prospective member and was thinking about joining, what, what can they look forward to as a member in terms of, you know, what can they partake in that's free or discounted and how can they begin to share, which is, I think what you were going with, Will, is that, you know, you engage these people here so that they can share with each other. 
what are some of the mechanisms or programs or initiatives that you have that allows them to do that? Well, you know, Matt has really um, been organizing this, so I'm going to turn it over to him. So there are, there are a lot of programs that we are offering to both members and non-members. And uh, what we're trying to do right now is offer as many programs as possible for either nothing to members, or we want to make sure that those programs are offered at a bare minimal cost, mostly so people actually show up. Because <laughs> what we find is if everything's free, half the people don't come. But if they pay a little bit, we get 100% attendance. Uh, so, uh, so for example, we're offering two one-day workshops in March. Both of them are $24.95 for members. But if you're a non-member, you're welcome to come for $250. And so you can see the, the, the distinction there. So in, in fact, uh, almost one program can pay for your annual membership, uh, almost. Uh, we're also offering free sessions like Will's uh, Learning Insights Weekly. So every Wednesday, uh, Will is offering a one-hour program. It's an informal get-together where he focuses everyone on one topic. So for example, last week uh, was the forgetting, uh, the remembering and forgetting curves. And he uh, forgot a lot about his presentation, but um, uh, we had a, a, about 80 people attending that session. That's our one a month that's open to the public. The rest of the sessions throughout the month, the other three, we only offer to members. So it's a member exclusive program. Uh, so we get maybe 15 to 20 people that come to it. And it's highly intimate and really cool. It's just a cool format because the process stays the same every time, but the topic changes. And so we're getting people coming back and back and back and so forth. We're about to launch uh, a couple e-learning asynchronous programs uh, that we're, uh, that'll be ready in a month, but we're gonna start announcing them shortly. Um, and those programs, one of them will involve uh, Ruth Clark. Another is involving Clark Quinn. And uh, Clark has to be in your name if you are doing an asynchronous program. Um, uh, uh, so we have programming. We are also offering lots of other resources. And one of the things we decided was we need to take the year to build up our library. And so we've reduced the membership fee for the first year so that people didn't expect it to be perfect and abundant in the first year because we wanted to curate stuff that's proprietary to LDA that you couldn't get anywhere else. And we wanted to make sure that we were putting the best of the best in there. And so we are slowly, meaning we put stuff in, we add every week uh, new articles, new videos, uh, podcast recordings, and other resources. Ruth Clark, for example, has put together a research review that goes out every two weeks. Um, this, by the way, is open to the entire world. That, that's in front of the, the member wall. Um, but we're, we're just adding content that people can find as resources. And not finally, but I'll, I'll say finally for, for this conversation, we're working on new programming. So we're working with a couple of people that I won't name right now until they firmly commit that they're definitely in. Uh, but we're working on putting together an onboarding process for people new to the industry. And these are two people, if I mentioned them now, you would say, oh yeah, yeah, that's what they do because we wanted to get two of the people that are the best at doing this to do it. Um, so that along with some of the mini conferences we're, we're putting together on ed tech leadership, we're also working on our annual conference that uh, we announced dates already, but uh, we're putting the program together now. Uh, and of course, you're a part of that. Uh, so Guy, so we assume you're gonna be a part of that again um, and so forth. So. Uh, that's what people get. So not to mention uh, all the networking things we're doing and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Well, let's go back to uh, LDC, which I did participate in. And that was the kind of the genesis for this, other, other than uh, Julie and, and your conversations in Barcelona. But um, so tell us a little, will the next LDC be similar to the previous one? And can you explain you know, what that was, how that worked for our audience? 
Sure. You take it. I'll, I'll take it, and then you can fill in the blanks where right. I go astray. Uh, so, uh, LDC 2020, last year's, was a six-week conference. Uh, Matt and I got together in March and realized that all the L and D conferences throughout the world would be all the face-to-face -face ones would go away, and both of us had wanted to create a conference individually before we got talking. Oh yeah, let's do it then. And um, we were inspired with a couple ideas. Number one, we wanted to support um, people in the field when they didn't have this support through face-to-face -face conferences. We also wanted to take a, a hard look at the conference as a learning event. And so uh, a typical conference, you go there, you go to maybe 12 sessions, two are brilliant, two are crappy, all the rest are in the middle. You get some ideas you want to take back. You go back to your workplace. You've got a zillion things in your inbox. Your motivation fades, your memory fades, and it, it's not really as good a learning experience as we'd want to design. And so one of our thoughts was one thing we might do to make that a little more effective is sort of take a, a learning in the workflow approach. So we had some sessions that ran for six weeks. You could go there, you could uh, get an assignment to take back to your work, you bring it back, you see, you know, whether your, your uh, co-workers like it, whether there's resistance, you bring that back to the conference, you discuss it with your facilitator, you get feedback from other participants, etc. Um, and so we, we tried to do that more than a typical conference could do. And that worked out really well, people really like that. Um, in fact, um, we did a conference evaluation at the end, and 29% uh, of our respondents said this was by far, <laughs> and, I, and I quote, the best conference they'd ever attended. 90% said it was above, you know, most conferences they've ever gone to. So the response was really great. And no, uh, well, from a marketing standpoint, that makes it sound not so good. It does? Yeah. Well, you talk uh, like that's great. You got to frame it differently. You got to say 99% thought it was above average or fantastic. I know. I, I, you know, that's why I'm not in marketing. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, but to answer your question directly, um, we're going to take the best parts of LDC 2020, put them into LDC 2021. We are um, investigating new uh, platforms to put this on. Um, we're going to have some of the same speakers, we're going to have new speakers, we're going to have some things continue, some things that will be discontinued. Um, we, we sort of have an experimental mindset about this. We're going to uh, try new things and see what works. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Matt to fill in the blanks because I'm sure... Uh, I don't have anything to add. It's, it's, uh, the intent here is to create a lot of really great opportunities for people to engage with content, with instructors, and with each other. And so that, that's the goal. But it will be another extended effort, right? Like a six week six weeks. Thing along those lines, yes. June, I'm sorry, I cut you off, but uh, it's June 21 to July 30. Those are the six week dates. Excellent. Earlier, one of you, or maybe both of you, re referenced trade organizations, and uh, you know many of our professional organizations actually are trade organizations, which means that they represent the trade, the sellers of things versus the the mm -hmm. customer side of things. Um, and I believe it's your intent to be different because often trade organizations. Uh, have to promote and sell myths. And one of the things that I really liked about what you guys are doing with the LDC conference itself and with LDA is that you're, you're going away from that. You're not uh, necessarily being sponsored by organizations that are going to promote you know, learning styles or multi-generational differences or any of the raft of uh, issues that uh, are, pervade our field. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you're going to, how is gatekeeping going to be done? Because what I've seen in the past in other organizations, it's usually the most junior people 
who are looking at submissions for presentation proposals and such. And so if it's, you know, sounds cool and hip and it's out there in social media, they may gravitate to uh, allowing those things in through the gate. How are you going to do this differently? So one of the things that, that uh, so there, there are multiple questions in, in what you just said. So let, <laughs> let me address one at a time. But uh, in terms of vendor relationships, we have no problem having sponsorships, but we're very clear that sponsors work within a set of parameters. We will clearly delineate them as sponsors. And we have already turned away sponsors that we don't want to be affiliated with us because they are either perpetuating things that we don't agree with, or they have uh, exemplified either some values or standards we don't want associated with us, whether it's inequity or how they treat their employees and so forth. And so it's very important to us that, that uh, we, we have standards for how we engage with, with sponsors. Right now, uh, we don't have any. I'm hoping we'll get some, but uh, we are not going to just take any offer for, for sponsorships. We, we, we really haven't reached out to sponsors yet for the conference. Yeah. Um, oh, not for the conference, but for LDA or the conference, right? Yeah. yeah we haven't really, we're, we're, we're starting with the membership. We're starting with mm -hmm. uh, building the programs, et cetera. And we just, you know, we just have not had the bandwidth yet to go out there. But that's our intention. I will tell you that um, the decision starts at the top with Matt and I, and we, have, we each have veto power um, if we think there's some question about whether a sponsor is appropriate. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's important to us. Now, this doesn't mean that um, we, we like to use the term research aligned. That doesn't mean that everybody that speaks at our program has to be like a, a research maven. It just means that they have to be, you know, encouraging things in general that are more likely to be effective. And we know that research isn't the only way to have evidence, right? There's practical evidence, there's uh, good evaluations, et cetera. Um, so we're, we're open to all that. Um, we, we're, you know, and we're not going to be able to guarantee that there won't be some misinformation <laughs> spoken <laughs> at our conference, but what we will uh, guarantee is that we're going to work hard to minimize that and to maximize, um, you know, really smart thinking, whether it comes from practice, whether it comes from research, whether it comes from, uh, you know, sort of best practice kind of stuff. And by the way, that doesn't mean we don't foster disagreement either. Yeah. We can have a tremendous amount of disagreement within the paradigm of evaluation, for example. So, uh, you, you know, if you think about it, in, the, the metaphor I liken it to is uh, the discourse around evolutionary theory. If you think about it like that, we're not debating whether there's evolution. We, in LDA, the meta metaphorically speaking, we accept evolution as, as a scientific deal. Where we will disagree is in the mechanisms for how that may work. And the same is true for learning mechanisms. So now transferring that back into how we were applying it. So when we talk about evaluation, okay, we agree that evaluation is a necessary process. Now let's talk about the mechanisms for how that works. Let's talk about some of the scientifically aligned facets and, and we can disagree within that. And so that's where the debate resides. And that's where we will hope to foster that. But we're not going to have a conversation about whether uh, evolution exists. <laughs> we accept all religions at our conferences and programs. <laughs> hey, you know, um, uh, we just to, examples. We had several debates last year. We had a debate on whether leadership training is effective or leadership development is effective. We had a debate about evaluation models. We had a debate about uh, neuroscience. What were some of the others, Matt? We had we had a couple more uh, impact versus the impact of. Uh, do we strive for imp learning impact or do we strive for the learning or uh, okay. business impact? Yeah, 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 that was good. And so uh, we, I we, think you lost that one. <laughs> I did lose <laughs> it by one point. I want to reach out. Oh, let's not go there. All right, so, so how, what's happened to the debunkers club? 
is this being folded in? How is it being folded in? What, what are you doing regarding that, Will? Yeah, so uh, the Debunker Club, for those who don't know, uh, represents about, I don't know, 1,200, 1,300 people from throughout the world who have joined an organization called the Debunker Club. It was a separate entity. And um, they basically uh, sh you know, showed an interest in looking at uh, the research on learning and performance and also um, figuring out what works, what doesn't, and then advocating uh, against some of the myths that are out there. So that's, that was, that's been up for about five years. I started it and did a terrible job maintaining it. <laughs> and uh, so now what we'd like to do is to fold that into uh, LDA. And we haven't figured out quite how to do that yet, um, but uh, it's important to us. We had a big meeting about it. It was very, how many, we had like 200 people attend that. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of interest there. Um, and uh, we'll, we're going to we're going to figure out a way to make that work. Not sure in exactly. Fact, how. Uh, Will doesn't know this yet, but we're about to have a debunker meeting in March. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Excellent. So hopefully Will can make that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how people can find LDA out there on the Internet. LDA accelerator dot com. It's that simple. Uh, you, that's our website and you can join uh, right there. You can access the member areas right from there. You can find LDA on, on LinkedIn. So we have a fairly newly significant uh, presence on LinkedIn. And uh, you can also follow both of us individually, uh, Will Tallheimer or Matthew Richter on LinkedIn. And you'll find us talking a lot about LDA individually as well as through the LDA LinkedIn presence. We have an LDA blog, which is uh, available to everyone. And we post at least weekly, sometimes more than weekly. Um, and we have people, all different people, so uh, posting. So it's not just me and Will, although I think right now we've posted the most, but uh, there's a lot of different people are posting things there as well. And uh, behind the, the paywall though, you'll, you'll find that we're posting stuff like we, we have an article uh, coming from Clark Quinn that I'm gonna, he just gave me, I'm gonna post that uh, today or tomorrow. Um, in front of the, the wall, Lori Niles Hoffman, for example, just gave me an article to go on the LDA blog that's available to everyone. Uh, so we're, we're trying to share things as much as we can uh, on a, a weekly basis. Um, and uh, we try and put out at least an article in, in a video weekly. If we can do it. And there's an email sign up, is there not? You can absolutely sign up for the email. Um, uh, that is, uh, you'll, you'll, you won't get uh, spammed by us, but now and then we'll send out a note saying, hey, check out, here's what's, what's coming to LDA this coming month. But to be honest, I think if you follow us on LinkedIn, that's where the heaviest traffic is. So if you want to know what's going on more frequently and, and don't head over to the website, LinkedIn may be the best way to, to keep up with us. Excellent. Any uh, final words here about uh, LDA that you'd like to share with the audience? We take requests. It doesn't mean we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do it, but um, we're, we, if you are interested in something and you want to know something, and it aligns to the evidence approach that we're taking, we will find a way to make it happen in the next few months. So just let us know. Um, uh, I know Will wants me to be careful, not promising too much, but uh, uh, <laughs> we will take requests. Matt, Matt is a very generous guy and he promises the world. And uh, sometimes- hey, have, I, have I not delivered? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the world is here. Evidence. The world is still here spinning. <laughs> It's no longer flat. Uh, in the beginning, Matt created the heavens and the earth. Oh, please cut that. <laughs> and right, that's well, how we on, lost 50% of our note, members. <laughs> on that note, let me thank both of you for uh, taking some time with me uh, today to discuss LDA and what it's all about and where you're going with it. And I'm very enthused to be a small part of it. And I would encourage uh, people to check it out, as you say, on the 
on the internet, on your website, and uh, through LinkedIn, if uh, that's where they find themselves most often in social media. I'm gonna At some point, we may be on the Facebook, too. Ah, and I'm going to put the links to LDA on the web and to LinkedIn in the show notes here on this YouTube video. But thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you, guys. Guy.